Hey, welcome to Stan the Energy Man. Stan Osterman here from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies. And we're coming to you live from Kukaiao Ranch on the Big Island, as you can tell by the background there. It's a beautiful day over in uh, Hamakua, in the uh, Hamakua coastline. Um, beautiful scenery up there, just a great place to be. That's God's country, the Big Island. I want to start off today talking a little bit about, um, you know, maybe almost even apologizing for uh, focusing a lot on the, on the National Guard, because I do. Um, uh, in 1979, about two, two weeks ago, 1979, uh, I joined the Hawaii Air Guard and <clears throat> spent 35 years and a month in the Hawaii Air Guard. And you know, when you sign up for something in the military, you really don't know what to expect. It's like, is this gonna be a career or am I just gonna do the minimum time and, and get out, and, you know? And you're just kind of looking at it mostly as a job because that's what you're used to after coming out of college is you got a job. But what you find, <clears throat> the longer you go in the guard, is you actually find that you're uh, part of a family, and uh, a pretty big family. In fact, in the Air Guard, it's 2,500 people big. Uh, so you grow a big family, and you get close to a lot of people. Uh, and in, in, the, in the guard itself in Hawaii, you actually get close to even the Army Guard guys, as silly as they are and as crazy as they are, because they're, they're a different breed altogether. Um, so. Today's guest is actually one of my, my guard buddies. I kind of think of him as a son, although he probably thinks of me more like a brother because he, he knows how young I am at heart. But uh, he's actually probably the same age as my real son and uh, about the same height, a little bit skinnier, but uh, good, good guys, both of them. And uh, the nice thing about the guard is it, it builds a lot into you. It builds a lot of character into you. It, uh, it, it helps you focus. It uh, gives you the kind of uh, the, pu the service, public service heart that you need to uh, get into politics and do things. So our, our guest today is uh, Kai Kaele from the Big Island. And I want to welcome you. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, I've known Kai for at least 15 years, and he probably doesn't know this, but uh, we kind of we kind of sneak in and look at his uh, resume when he starts off about second lieutenant, first lieutenant time. And uh, he was on our radar as a leader in the Guard uh, from, from pretty early on. But he's now stepped up to take his dad's place at, um, in the state senate. Uh, and so it's 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 uh, great that the governor appointed you because your dad Absolutely. was a great a great guy and uh, and left some big shoes to fill. But we're glad that you're on board. Thank you. But we also had uh, another family member uh, <clears throat> kind of depart us this uh, this week. And uh, there he is, Lieutenant Colonel Mark DeKai. Great guy. That's at uh, in August in 2013. Uh, that's in our shop about maybe six or eight months ago when I'm talking to him about how fuel cell vehicles work. And then uh, he was actually here on Think Tech, uh, actually on my birthday on Think Tech. So we took some pictures of him afterwards. But uh, we're going to miss him. We're going to miss Mark the guy. Absolutely. But, so, special man. Yeah, very special man. Hardworking. And uh, like I say, I think it's a guard thing to, uh, to be a public servant, to, to go to the service before self-route. So uh, Mark was all that and even more. So We've lost some uh, great men this year, Stan. Yeah, we really have. You know, and uh, if there's anything that that uh, reinforces is that life is short. It you is. Know, and it's very precious. And uh, we're only here for a short amount of time. And so the difference we make people's lives the children we leave behind the legacies we leave behind are so important you know and uh what, what special man mark takai you know my dad and and uh fortunate to have had them in our lives yes and what an uh, amazing men they were and uh they're not forgotten they won't be forgotten that's and, true and uh that's true yeah. Well, thanks for being here today. We're here to talk about energy and energy on the Big Island specifically. Absolutely. And uh, got to work with your dad a lot on the Big Island uh, with energy. Um, he was heavily involved with Blue Planet and the folks over there doing a lot of energy projects. So today's a chance for uh, us to talk a little bit about what the Big Island is doing. From my perspective, the Big Island is way ahead of Oahu on a lot of energy things. Um, they're kind of cutting edge. They're, they're looking at things like co-ops. They're looking at... Uh, you know, maybe a, a lot more off the grid stuff. They're looking at hydrogen. They're way ahead on hydrogen. In fact, uh, Ford Fujikami's folks in DOT at the airports over there in Kona 
um, he's had to throttle his guys back and hold the reins in because mm -hmm. they, so, they want to have hydrogen flight line like yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so they'd love to see us uh, doing more hydrogen stuff on the Big Island. You got Nell Hall over there. You've got University of Hawaii Hilo engineering department that they want to focus on energy. So just lots going on in the Big Island. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about what your thoughts are for energy on the Big Island? You know, like you said, my dad was a, was a big supporter of renewable energy. And, and I think more importantly, it was a big supporter of Hawaii's local families. And one of the things that resonated um, year after year after year when my dad went out into the communities was the cost of utilities here in Hawaii and, and how that uh, really, really uh, puts a stranglehold on, on our island families. You know, we, we live in um, a state that has the highest utility rates in the country. And, and, you know, we live in a beautiful place and we have a lot of resources that we can um, we can use uh, to help bring those costs down, uh, but do it in a clean way and do it in a, a Pono way. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, the, the island of Hawaii is, uh, is, a, is a great example of, of, you know, different types of renewable energy, and you, you mentioned several of them. Yeah, the, the uh, other thing that people kind of lose, lose sight of is the fact that when you import so much oil for transportation energy and for your electricity, you're importing that means your money is leaving just for the energy you're bringing in and you mentioned Absolutely. we have tons of ways to make electricity in hawaii on the big island there's a lot of even hydroelectric you know you've got water running in old flumes on the sugarcane plantations you've got um ocean thermal you got geothermal you've got tons of solar you got wind you know what are some of your thoughts on different energy technologies you'd like to see us focus on well you know we, we just uh came off a great, you know, over a year uh, debate with the uh, NextEra and, and HECO merger. And, and uh, we really learned a lot from, from that process. And I think there's a misconception out there that I, that I want to set uh, and make clear is, is that um, the, the oil that we import largely comes in from uh, foreign oil, from right. Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that represents about 70% of... Uh, of, of the, the utilities that are, that are coming in, you know, and so it's not, Hawaiian Electric is a great company. It's a family-owned company, and uh, um, a lot of blame is, is put on Hawaiian Electric, but it's, it's, it's not Hawaiian Electric. It's the imported oils that are coming into the refineries here in, here in Honolulu and on, uh, at Campbell um, that drive up the cost of utilities. So how do we get off of that? You know, there's been different... Uh, solutions you know liquid liquefied natural gas geothermal wave energy hydro pv wind um but it takes leadership to bring that together you know it, it takes uh, uh out of the box thinking um to uh, to bring that technology to our state you know but um something has to be done you know? do you think with uh, the the results we've gotten from the from the puc this week on the next era merger and, and that pretty much being the end of the possibilities for that merger happening. Do you think that's going to have a positive effect on bringing people to the table and really talking in Turkey about uh, some of the possibilities and what we need to do? You know, if you look at liquefied natural gas, which was part of a large part of their proposal, that's cheaper than imported oil, <clears throat> right? Right. But at the same time, you could almost compare that to geothermal and say, hey, that's, that's, that's fracking. You know, how do you compare the two, liquefied natural gas versus geothermal, right. you know? so. Is that the answer? It's, it was a cheaper answer than, than uh, importing oil from Indonesia. Um, but uh, I think we can do better, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I think, uh, but you gotta take baby steps at the same mm -hmm. time, you know? Um, I had a chance to tour the uh, Helco facilities in Hilo and um, uh, had a great opportunity to look at the grid. Um, got a great presentation by Jay Ignacio and, and looked at what was being generated real time hydro, PV, uh, the wind farm. Um, an untapped resource that uh, is on the table right now is the Huhonua Bioenergy Plant mm -hmm. out at Pepekeo, you know, which has a opportunity to provide maybe 20 to 25 megawatts to the grid um, by um, burning eucalyptus trees that have been growing for the last 20, 30 years on the Hamakua coast. That's an option. Um, and so, you know, I'd be willing to look at every, uh, anything out there that can help bring utility rates down for As, our local families. Speaking of trees, um, I was actually approached uh, this past week by a couple of folks who are looking at the Albizia trees that uh, they need to get rid of on the Big Island. And actually, that's another DOT focus because the trees come down on the highways, the mm -hmm. roadways, and 
And so again, uh, state DOT, Ford, Ford Fujigami and his folks, uh, they'd like to get rid of the Albizia trees. And there's some good technologies, uh, gasification technologies that'll take those trees and not just, not burn them, it's more pyrolysis. It converts, it converts the trees into synthetic gas, mm -hmm. captures a lot of the, there's no emissions, it just captures them all, and then burns the uh, synthetic gas in the engines that run, that are designed to run off of the syngas mm. and make electricity. Mm. And so there's some folks looking at that too. So aside from the eucalyptus trees that are there, um, you also have the invasive Albizia. species you can get rid of that Absolutely. are that are a real problem, especially we got Hurricane Darby rolling in this we week. Do. You know, if we have a, a bunch of winds on the east side of the Big Island like we did last year, uh, knock down a bunch of Albizia trees, that's that's Hiko at work putting power lines back up and things yep. like that. So yep. so there's, there's a, a lot of symbiotic benefits to looking at those kind of technologies to help HECO not have to put their lines back up because the trees are knocking them down yeah. and using those trees to generate power. Absolutely. Um, I'm excited about wave energy. You know, that's something that is, I think, an untapped uh, resource. We've, we've talked about it in the past. Um, it's my understanding that offshore uh, Connery Marine Corps base are experimenting with that type of technology. Right. But I think that's something that uh, um, possibly could be explored as well. Yeah, they've gone through a couple generations and, and the way it works is they tether a buoy to the bottom and as the buoy rises up and down with the swells going by, mm -hmm. it's like a yo-yo pulling on a, on a string mm -hmm. and it runs a generator. Mm -hmm. But there's actually several different designs out there. One of the great designs that I've seen from a, a gentleman named John Petrie, he's a local designer and inventor, was a, an array of buoys that just float and they're all connected by hydraulic arms right. and every time one goes into a trough and the other one goes up it it's pushing on something and it can be used for reverse osmosis to desalinate water it can be used to generate electricity it can be used to do a lot of things so yeah you're right ocean power especially you're you're a water guy you know you've been out sure. of the ocean you know how powerful it is and yep. and you know i tell so people we're surrounded by water yeah. right? this is an island state you exactly. know and uh, we have are near shore that, that, that drops off to deep ocean, you know, so that potential is there. Yeah, and you got ocean thermal at Nelha, that's, that's pretty OTEC mm -hmm. producing. I had uh, Dr. Kroc from the University of Hawaii, he invented the OTEC system out there. Mm -hmm. um, that's amazing. I mean, you just have a, pr a temperature differential of, of a few degrees between offshore and, and top uh, surface water, yeah. and you can generate electricity from that. Wow. So one of the great things that I, I started to appreciate when I came into the job here was that Energy is all around us, and it's just a matter of looking for it, recognizing it, and figuring out how to put it into application. And so I, th I think that Hawaii has more renewable energy options than probably any other state in the U.S., and we need to be ready to, to use all of them. At the same time, we also have the most pristine environment and ecosystems on the right. planet, you know, and we live in a very special place. And so it's trying to, to walk that fine line between renewable energy and, and lowering utility rates but also doing it in a, in a way that respects our environment, you know. And, uh, well, we can afford to yeah. be picky, yeah, because yeah. we can choose. Yeah. We, we've got plenty yeah. here, we can choose from I all I think we can, lead the, we can lead the country in uh, renewable energy. You know, we have the potential to be a model for the rest of the world. I agree, I agree. Well, we're gonna take a quick break here and we'll be back with Senator Kai Kaheli and talk more about energy on the Big Island. Pumped hydro, that's the word. We just had a great show on Hawaii, the state of clean energy uh, with uh, uh, George uh, St. John and Ray Starling, and we're talking about how, how, uh, how pumped hydro or hydro in general could affect uh, our clean energy initiative. So what do you guys, how did it go for you? George? I, went great. <laughs> you don't look like George. <laughs> went, went great. Yeah. I think that's... That's it? One of my favorites. You seem so excited about this. Well, I've Boy, been he, at it a while. <laughs> He's been, I was just going to say, he's been at it for a while and he knows more than, uh, than uh, we will ever know about true. Uh, clean energy. We really we got him to tell us, yeah. too. We got information out of him and we got his true, you know, his true thoughts. And uh, now he's going to tell us how he really thinks. Go for it. <laughs> That's what you said before. Anyway, thank you, Ray. Thank you, George. You're welcome. We'll do this again. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to my lunch hour. Stan, Energy Man here with Senator Kai Kaheli from the Big Island, from District 1 in Hilo. And uh, he's uh, stepped into his dad's shoes. Uh, the governor was, I think, wise enough, if I can use that, that adjective for the governor, to, to pick you. Because you're, uh, as, a, as a guard officer, like I said, 
been watching you for a while. You're, you're a natural leader. You're good Appreciate to go. That. So it's, a, it's great to have you in the seat there and look forward to working with you again in the future in the legislature. But let's talk a little bit about transportation. Um, two of the projects that we're, we're working on with University of Hawaii are some buses for Volcano National Park mm -hmm. that run off hydrogen. And I get to talk to a lot of people about, I get into the middle of the battery versus hydrogen. It's kind of like taste great, less filling. Mm -hmm. We get in these arguments all the time about well, what, what's better, <laughs> batteries or hydrogen. And really, what somebody pointed out to me that most of the hydrogen folks like batteries and we understand them, mm -hmm. you know, because we know that we need them. Even in hydrogen vehicles, we need the batteries. But most battery people are really, they must feel threatened by hydrogen because they get almost, like Elon Musk who does the Tesla, he hates hydrogen, mm -hmm. doesn't like it at all. Wow. But the, there's a lot of different characteristics when you get into the energy business besides energy into energy out for storage and mm -hmm. things like that. So one of the things that I like to point out to people is one of the properties that we struggle with here in Hawaii is that a lot of the energy requirements are on Oahu, but a lot of the energy potential for production are on the it's neighbor on islands. islands. So we've had the discussion of laying an undersea cable and what does that do? That puts all those wind turbines on Maui, Molokai, and Lanai and it does exactly what you said we shouldn't do. Take up our beautiful skyline and put a bunch of windmills yeah. up to destroy you know, our natural beauty yeah. for the sake of bringing high, uh, electricity to Honolulu. So there's, there's other ways to do it. And one of the ways that I like to propose is that we use hydrogen for some of the energy storage. It's not as efficient like a battery in and, in and out, but it's very transportable. You can take the hydrogen that you, if you if you use like geothermal or wave energy on the big island to make electricity, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and made it clean, mm -hmm. uh, make hydrogen from that and either um, chill it down to liquefy it, then ship it to Honolulu, turn it back into electricity on this end. You can actually transport the energy. So that's one of the advantages of things like hydrogen is the trans transportability piece. It's not just the energy in, in energy out. So. A lot of people come up to me and go, Stan, we've got to do a business case. Why should we do this or why should we use that? It doesn't pencil out, it's too expensive or it's not as efficient. And I go, well, you got to take the full cradle to grave. Like batteries have to be mined. Lithium is a finite in -source, uh, resource. It comes mostly from South America. Mm -hmm. Like 90% of the world's reserves are in South America. We're back in the same boat again, importing a, a resource from one place in the world. And you know, that would be just like, doing the oil thing all over is again. the military doing any type of hydrogen here yeah uh, it have such a big presence can you talk in, about in that fact the second? hawaii air guard is going to start doing microgrid um at the fighter side mm -hmm. across the field from where you're you're flying and we're going to be doing hydrogen as a primary energy storage we're going to look at other energy stores like flywheels and pumped hydro and things like that but uh but hydrogen will we're like trying to make it into the flight line of the future where when the Air Force deploys someplace, if they take the renewable wind turbines and solar and things like that, they can make their energy on base, store it in hydrogen, and when they're making their hydrogen, they're making oxygen for the flight line for the liquid oxygen in the aircraft. They're making medical grade oxygen for the medical people. They're making oxygen for the welders. Um, you can disperse all your energy assets so you're not one big target for the guy on the hill with a mortar. Um, the hydrogen is quiet when it's used in a fuel cell. It doesn't make any noise. So you have silence, which is important when you're trying to mask what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Likewise, heat signature. When you're using hydrogen, there's very low heat signature. So the, the thermal imaging at night, the enemy can't sit there and thermal image what you're doing because he can't find the hot spot. Mm -hmm. Things like that. The Air Force appreciates that. So, so there's a lot of other things to add in. We have a, an, a waste to energy project at Hickam. And everybody goes, oh, it's too manpower intensive. I go, yeah, it is. But it gets rid of all of your hazardous materials. They just go in there and they turn into energy. Wow. So you don't have to pay these huge fees and, and pollute the environment. It gets rid of that. You don't have burn pits. So you've got to actually quantify those other advantages to your energy pieces and not just go energy in, energy out, which is more efficient. How cool would that be if we could have uh, aircraft, jet aircraft that were operated with hydrogen? Yeah, actually, it's not quite ready for prime time, yeah. but the folks on the Big Island at Blue Planet Research are working with the University of Phoenix. And, and I'm hoping that early next year, Paul Pontio can come on this, on this show and start talking about a new, awesome. a new synthetic fuel that they're working on that could go in airplanes. And wow. it's, and everything, only thing would come out the exhaust of your engine is water. Wow. And it's just awesome. So wow. we're, we're kind of keeping tabs on that and watching how it goes. And we're hoping that that stuff will pan out because wow. if it does 
again, Hawaii would like to take the lead on that. Hawaii would like to be out in front and, and, wow. and lead the world on that stuff. So. Yeah, it's my understanding that the oil that's imported from Indonesia, um, the bulk of it goes to jet fuel. Yes. It gets refined. And then the, the sludge, I guess, or the byproduct of that is what gets sold to uh, Helco and Hiko to burn their plants. Right. Is that correct? Yeah, when the, when the oil comes in on the tanker, it's actually made into a bunch of different things. Right. A lot of people don't realize that... that um, that the Hawaii gas that does all the, the propane and things for the island here, they actually take some of that oil in the form of naphtha, and that's what they end up refining into their natural gas pipeline and turning it into propane. So um, it, there's, there's a lot of things that, that go through that system that um, if you have a change in, in the oil ecosystem, it actually has a ripple effect through a lot of different industries wow. here. You know, the governor... Uh said a bold statement when he took office that he wanted Hawaii to be 100% clean energy by 2045. You think that's something that's possible? I think it's possible. I, I think, you know, and you said at first, Hiko's a great company a, a, and a local company, um, but they've been making electricity probably longer than most public utilities have been, been in business. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem with that is sometimes you, you kind of can't break out of that mold. You know, yeah. you, you only see your system one way and they need to have some, some different thinkers coming in. And I think they're actually opening up and beginning to think more about different business models and different ways they can adopt different technologies to, to come into their system. And um, with renewable energy, you gotta have storage. Battery storage is one, res one answer. They gotta look at other things like hydrogen and other ways to store energy. Otherwise, they can't handle all the renewables. And, the nice thing about the hydrogen piece, and people out there know I'm the hydrogen fanatic, so I'm going to stick on that theme, but um, if we can get HECO to store energy in hydrogen, that hydrogen is also available for the transportation sector. Well, you talk about storage, and one of the things that I, that I remember from my tour at, at uh, HELCO was when they have an excess amount of power that gets generated, whether it's from PV or from, uh, say, the hydro, the rivers are pumping uh, after a heavy rainfall. Um, or from the wind farms, they don't have a capability to store that. Exactly. So it just gets dumped, dumped. it gets wasted. They call it curtailed power. Yeah. And, and that's why a lot of people say, well, Stan, if you do electrolysis to make your hydrogen, it's too expensive because electricity is too expensive. And I go, yeah, but as you absorb more and more renewables, uh, intermittent renewables on your system, you're going to end up dumping power at times because you can't absorb all of it. Mm -hmm. That's where you take the electricity to make your hydrogen, not when you're trying to provide everybody peak power at dinner time, when they're cooking dinner and watching TV and doing their computer. You take it at the time when you've got all this PV out there making electricity and HECO can't use it. You take it and make hydrogen. And the hydrogen can be made out in the community. So imagine you have Kahi power plant generating all this power and pushing it through a line to substations and transformers all the way across the island. Well, what if you put the hydrogen generation and the hydrogen ability to generate power back into the system out in the community in dispatchable power? Put it in Mililani, put it on North Shore, put it in Kanioi, put it in Kailua. So now you don't have to push the power from the big station all the way across the island. The power that you make from the, the renewables in that area, you turn back into electricity in that area. You lose all of the loss, the line loss, and all the power that you normally would lose pushing it through uh, telephone or fo uh, electric lines wow. and you don't have to have all that extra equipment like transformers and stuff to all along the line to boost the power so there's there's a lot of things that I think HECO will start looking at now that they're back in the yeah. next era is uh, out of the picture and they're, yeah. they're looking at the next steps and I, I know that they'd love to work with the legislature and PUC and, and come up with some great solutions so sure yeah. one thing I wanted to mention and, and you touched on it in the beginning we haven't had a chance to address it maybe we can spend a few minutes is co-ops right um you know Kauai has its own co-op and its utility and and uh richard ha and the other individuals on hawaii island have been talking about a co-op for uh, quite some time now what are your thoughts on uh, i think that on, on an island like the hawaii how successful has it been on the island of Kauai? It, the folks from Kauai love it are their utility rates lower? They're a little bit lower. Okay. I don't think it's as dramatic as most people w had envisioned. But you have to look at uh, the different geography. You know, Kauai is still fairly compact, you know, like Oahu. It's, it's, but the Big Island is a whole different animal. Mm -hmm. You have people that have a ranch or something, and there's only four or five houses around, and that power line is going six miles to those four or five houses. Those four or five houses should be, have their own little power generation. Yeah. 
And a co-op can be pretty small. I mean, an off-the-grid community can be, should be something that HECO or HELCO says, hey, we'll design that grid off-the-grid system for you and we'll help you maintain it. And, and then we don't have to run a power line all the way from the main line up to your ranch. You can, you can actually have HELCO or HECO help these smaller companies or smaller co-ops do their maintenance and keep the linemen employed and, and do all those kind of things. They just have to change their vision of how they do business. And, yeah. and, and there's also the, the possibility that, you know, as photovoltaics become more and more a part of the community, um, you could take parts of the community and leave the HECO helco lines in place and maybe have one or two people that have a lot of PV on their roof generate for their whole community. And the power company still sells everybody power and uses that transformer lines to move, move power around their neighborhood not necessarily across the whole island, yeah. but they can help manage in that way too. So the, co the whole, whole idea from a co-op all the way down to some little community off the grid models are things that our utilities should probably start to consider. So like I've always said, uh, I support HELCO, local family, a lot of great workers, um, you know, local island company, but they're the only uh, company in the state that provides power and, and sometimes competition is a good thing. You yes. know? I'm a, airline pilot in the airline industry and it's a highly highly competitive yeah. industry and you're always trying to improve your game you're always trying to make uh, your product better you know for the customer um, and I don't think uh, we, we've had that as far as uh, our utility company and so I'm not saying they're not trying their best no. but uh, comp it's a challenge competition, it's uh, a challenge makes and people better it does you know? it does and the, the PUC is there to kind of help even yeah. the field and, yeah. and make it competitive yeah. but even then politics gets in there yeah. and you know things happen so as good as it can be it's still not as competitive as like you say the airline industry yeah. where now the the gloves are off and you're really pension pennies and 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 cutting rates and doing the best you can yeah. and still taking care of your employees, yeah. which is important too. Yeah. I mean, you can't just get so cutthroat in your business where you don't take care of your people. That's, Absolutely that's important not. to watch yeah, out. There's a lot of local families that I think if you approach it with the mindset of uh, families are first, Ohana, you know, we, uh, we're all in this canoe together. That's right. You know, my dad we used to always say we're all in this together and uh, um, we got to work together, you know, and if we have that mindset, then uh, things will be okay. I think we've got to be like the big guard family, right? Yeah. Well, Senator, it's, believe it or not, a whole half hour's buzz by. That's and, amazing. And uh, I know you got some traveling to do right away here, so I'm going to let I'm you know. i to race a hurricane and, and get back to Hilo to my family. Thanks so, so much for being on the show yeah. with us today, and thanks for your time with Stan Energy Man. Have a safe trip over to Hilo, and we'll see everyone next week on Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Stay dry, and have a safe weekend.